again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Hall County Sports Television. I'm your host, Gary Glenn. Well, the summertime, the weather is hot, and some of the action has been hot as well. In fact, just had a huge baseball tournament wrapping up at Gainesville's Lanier Point Complex. Little League teams from all over the district competed for the right to advance to the next stage of competition. Now, Beth Morris is the athletic program manager for the Gainesville Parks and Recreation Department, and she and Barry Brooks from Gainesville Park and Rec join us now. And, folks... First of all, thanks for coming out during this uh, this dead week, as everybody says it is, right? You know, nothing much going on this week of the week of Fourth of July, the holiday, but uh, it was a big deal, wasn't it? I mean, a lot of lot of teams and a lot of kids, Beth. Yes, it was. We uh, we started last Saturday, uh, June twenty third, and went through this past Saturday, the thirtieth. Uh, had thirty eight teams from Athens, Gainesville, uh, Newton County, Oconee County, and Walton County. So mm -hmm. we had a had a busy week. Yeah. Barry, how many how many kids did you have involved in this? Probably I'd say excess of four hundred kids or so, probably. Four hundred kids, and all the moms and dads and coaches and all of that kind and of mom, stuff. Mom, dads, grandparents, everybody. Well, what's involved in putting something like this on? How do you gear up for it? How do you get ready for it? Well, you just you know you got a lot of good help. You got to have a lot of good help, in, in which we do. Uh, staff done a lot of done a lot of things about putting things together as far as scheduling. You know, getting scorekeepers and pitch counters and gate workers and you know making sure all the fields and everything was ready and trash picked up each and every night before folks came you know the group effort from everybody's part. Beth this is a massive amount of work isn't it? It is but it, it, it was very rewarding to see the, the kids playing and having a good time which we saw a lot of that this week. What, what age what age range are we talking about here? Age 7 to uh, 18. Eight, seven age to 18. 7 to 18. So you're picking up probably some kids off these travel ball people or are, there, are they on their own little thing, and this is just more or less these pure little leagues. Well, you probably got a mixture. You probably got some kids who play travel throughout the year, but also participate in their local little league programs, and you know, and it, it's probably a mixture, a little bit of both. So, so Beth, how do we do? We got anybody moving on? Uh, I'm sad to say we have not. Really? No, uh, we we had a had a couple of teams that were uh, made it to the end, and unfortunately didn't didn't not gonna be able to advance. Well, let's brag on them a little bit. Who who played for the championship? Um, we had our 10-11 Gainesville American team uh, that was in the championship game and came up short. And then we had uh, one of our 11 and 12-year-old teams that made it, uh, I guess they'd be third place in, mm -hmm. their, in their tournament. So, Well, that's, Bear, that's tough, isn't it? you got to win it to go on? you got to win it to go on. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know, all or nothing pretty much. How long has this been this kind of thing been going on in the Gainesville and Hall County? I know we've got we've got a pretty good rep out there for baseball all the way up through the high school ranks here, don't we? Yeah, you talking about as far as the the tournament? Itself? Yeah, how much uh, the tournament? I know that probably been nobody probably remembers how long we've been playing little league baseball. <laughs> we uh, this is actually the first year that we've hosted hosted the, the whole all age groups. We've done you know in the past we've hosted just certain age groups, but this time. It's kind of a tradition now that all the age group tournaments try to go to one location, and that way if, if a parent has a kid playing in more than one division, then they can go to one spot and, and watch their kids play. So this is the first time that Gainesville Parks and Recreation has actually hosted all of the age groups. Is so, something like this we're going to be doing again here? It will be in the rotation now uh, with Athens and you know Walton, Oconee, and Newton and the other, um, other Little League districts. Barry, how'd you get involved in all of this? I've uh, been, uh, been in recreation for a long time. I've been with the games of Park and Rec for about you know, going on four years. Uh, you know, this you know, best been good as gold. She's kind of took me underneath her wing and showed me, pointed me in the right direction. But you know, I've been, I got you know, almost 20 years, 20 plus years in Parks and Recreation, and uh, just been around it for a long time. Well, I know that both of you are long-time veterans. Beth, you've been in along with his. But how have you seen the coaching? as well as the participation and just the kind of the general makeup of Little League Baseball. How have you seen it change? Because it has changed. It, it's changed uh, tremendously. I think the I think the coaches, you know, the coaching has gotten better. Uh, the level of play has gotten better, but you still, you know, it's, it's still a good mixture of competitive baseball and recreation baseball all at the same time. Um, and speaking of our coaches, uh, we could not do what we do without our volunteer coaches. They are they are tremendous and we have some, some real good people involved there. 
You kind of have to be careful now. I mean, it's sad to say, but in these days and times, you really do, don't you? Oh, yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Now, what, are there anything that they have to do? To, they have to take like a, a course or, or at least some kind of certification now? Yeah, the NYCA certifi certification, which is the National Youth Sports Coaches Association, uh, they go through that certification program. They also have to, you know, fill out app coaches' applications that requires a background check. And, and you know, our, our coaches have photo ID badges. And, you know, if you don't have your badge, you don't get in the dugout or on the field. And, and there's a lot that goes into the background checks now. Well, I'm sure there is. And, and that's kind of sad in a way, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sure is. But it's something that, at least when you have that, though, the moms and the dads, they feel that their kids are being handled by people who are responsible. That's correct, and the photo ID badge identifies who that coach is and identifies that the that coach has, you know, met the requirements to be a volunteer coach. So that's uh, that's a good thing. Tell me about what you got coming up now. Anything for the rest of the summer? Now, uh, you know, here it is. We say the rest of the summer. Summertime's got a long time to go, but kids are back in school first of August now. First of yeah. August, uh, yeah. we got a few camps coming up. Uh, you have some golf camps coming up, basketball, volleyball, and just right around the corner, you know, football will be ready to get going. Uh, Registration is going on now and on end August 10th, which is the first day of school, and then and we'll start our evaluation period and splitting our teams up uh, on August, uh, what, 13th, 12th, whatever that next Monday is. So. Wow. <laughs> it slips away, doesn't yeah, it? Huh? Time flies Sneaks when you're having fun. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. That's what, hey, listen, and that's what a lot of this is about, isn't it? Huh? It is. Let's have some fun. Yeah. At, at the, particularly at this level, mm -hmm. we don't we don't want somebody out there thinking they're the next reincarnation of Vince Lombardi. These are kids; exactly. they need to have some. T they need to have some fun. It's all about the kids. That's that's what it's for. Okay, now I guess you got online kind of stuff that they can either look at or register or phone number or come by and get paper copies. What's the best thing for parents that are out there watching this to do to register their kids for any of these camps or sign up any of this stuff? Uh, you can go to our to our website uh, and, and it'll have all our camp information, all the football, cheerleading information. We got to mention cheerleading as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. We don't want to forget cheerleading. And uh, I mean, all that stuff's on the website. You can register online if need to, uh, or if you want to run by the central office, which is on uh, at the Civic Center off of Green Street. Uh, you're more than welcome to go by there. Uh, you know, just a couple of different ways you you can you know find ways to get registered for for each sport or each camp coming up. And Beth, what's that website? Uh, org backslash recreation. I hear you. All right, and very the good. phone number is 770-531-2680. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. Barry, good to meet you. Yes, I think sir, I probably Barry. know your daddy. Yeah, don't, I? don't hold that against you. <laughs> Barry don't Brooks against and Beth Morris. Listen, congratulations and good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. In other baseball, the eight and under Claremont A's baseball team recently ended an outstanding season with a 20-3 win over Dawson County for the Dizzy Dean District 6 Championship. Made up of youths from Walker Mountain, Mount Vernon, and Martin Elementary, the A's took first place in both the Who's on First and Fastball 2012 tournaments held in Monroe. The A's also had a couple of runners-up finishes at tournaments out of 16 teams in the Central Park Athletic Association tournament without being able to play for the championship due to rain. And the A's placed second in the GAUSSSA State Tournament along the way, defeating a team that hadn't lost a game all season. The Hall County Heat won the 11-year-old District 6 Dizzy Dean All-Star Tournament, going undefeated along the way. And the 9-and-under Flowery Branch Falcons won the Lanier League AA title in coming. Well, from baseball to football, there was some teams sweating it out at Johnson last week. That story when we return. Your one-stop spot for complete auto repair is the Auto Works Shop on Spry Springs Road. On everything from oil changes to brakes, new and used tires and tune-ups, even the big jobs like transmissions. The specialists at the Auto Works can have you up and running just like that. You talk about value, the Auto Works will not be undersold on used tires or any locally priced repair job. Ask about special discounts for students and teachers with your ID. That's the Auto Works at 6671 Spout Springs Road, just past Flowery Branch High and Spout Springs Elementary Schools. Phone 770-967-1732. There are hundreds of options when choosing apparel or promotional items at Jay Geyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. We're all about quality and competitive pricing. Sports items are in stock. Look for special pricing on letterman jackets, corporate apparel, corporate gifts, and custom embroidery. All local high schools should check out the line of spirit wear and trophies. We're also offering custom screen printing available for any team sport. Be on the winning side when you choose Jay Geyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. Locally owned and operated at 250 Dawsonville Highway, Gainesville. 
Call 770-718-0062 or on the web at jgeyer.com and trophycaseltd.com. Gary Glenn back with Pastor Rob Bruce of McKeever Road United Methodist Church. And Rob, thanks once again for helping us support local athletes. Well, it's our pleasure to support the athletes of Hall County, both young and old. <laughs> Tell me about the mission statement that was recently come up with for the McKeever Road United Methodist yeah, Church. Our mission statement, actually it's our vision statement. Our mission is to make disciples for the of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But how we go about that is what our, mission, our vision statement is, and that's loving Christ, loving people, and helping people to love Christ. That sums up what we do at McEver Road United Methodist. All right. Well, the, even though it's summertime, still got plenty of things going on here at the church. Yeah, we've got uh, a series on James that will be coming up at uh, the end of the month, uh, three weeks. We've got uh, a mission trip to Mississippi. A lot of people don't realize there's still a lot of victims of Katrina that don't have places to live. They're still in trailers. So we'll be going down there for a week uh, to build a house, actually, for a family there. All right, Rob, we'll see you in church on Sunday. Okay, well, great, Gary. Thank you. We're back. I'm Gary Glenn, and this is Hall County Sports. Now, this week, the 4th of July week, is the so-called dead week, where high school sports of all types take the entire week off, even from those voluntary summer workouts. Now, last Thursday, though, was plenty busy as the Fellowship of Christian Athletes held their annual Passing Day Lineman's Challenge at Johnson High School. There was the seven-on-seven -seven passing challenge for various teams for the backs and receivers, the defensive backs and the linebackers, while the linemen pushed sleds, did obstacle courses, carried weights, and did the famous bull pull. Now, they didn't keep track of the passing stuff, but they did keep a tally on what the hogs did. Now, the FCA linemen's challenge, the varsity, the first place went to a tie, and they stayed a tie between Gainesville High School and Chester T. Third place was Gilmer County. Fourth place was Johnson. North Forsyth and Lakeview finished in fifth place tie. The JV, first place went to the Bobcats of Gilmer. North Forsyth and Gainesville tied for second in the JV overall in the Lyman's Challenge. Fourth place, Chester T and West Hall tied. Now the bull pull results. Now that's mano a mano, literally. The varsity championship, first place went to Mason Bowles of Johnson High School. Second place, senior Blake Manning out of West Hall. Offensive tackle who's 6'6 and 300 pounds. So Mason did a pretty good job out pulling that fella. JV, second place to Ramsey Hill of the Lakeview Lions. First place went to Mr. Diesel of Gilmer County. Now, the day was a lot about football and a lot about the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of the sport. The local FCA director is Jason Lester. This is our sixth year, Gary, doing this, and, uh, and, and it's awesome. Every year has been great, and this year, though, we got our largest crowd that we've ever had, got 10 teams. Uh, we've added the linemen's portion, you know, a couple of years ago, and I think mm -hmm. all of our coaches are buying into that now, so everybody's brought linemen with them, too, and it's all just a reason to get out here and, and of course, to get better at football, but, uh, you know, FCA's purpose is to share Christ with these athletes, and that's what we're going to do today. we got Thomas Settles, the chaplain at University of Georgia, the football chaplain, is going to be with us this evening, and and share a word with them, and then uh, and then we'll have some more football this afternoon. So hopefully everything will go well. You get tremendous feedback from this and your summer camps and the, the coaches, the retreats that you at, don't you? This is something that it's, it's a whole life type thing. Not It's about athletics, but then it's about a whole lot of other stuff. That's right. And, and listen, we're blessed again with these coaches that we've got. Every coach we've got at this deal here, and, and even the coaches that, that aren't necessarily here with us today, but, but – coach in this county we're blessed with godly coaches that understand that fca is able to come alongside them and encourage them and uh and, and equip them to be able to do that even more but it is it's, it's it's more than football but it's it's we're blessed to have men that understand that it's more now they love football and they want to win and there's nothing wrong with being competitive but uh but they also know the aspects of foot that, that that football can teach other than just physical but the spiritual part and we're just glad to be able to partner with them in that now, last week, you may recall, here on the show, we did feature the new Johnson coach, Jason Rockmore. Well, the Knights will be hosting West Hall on August 24th in the Battle of Oakwood to open up the season. Now, the new West Hall coach, Tony Lottie, he was on hand last Thursday. Well, so far, we've had a good summer. Um, been concentrating on, on our numbers, which the uh, number's been good. We are averaging about 56, 57 kids every day over the summer through the summer workouts. And we spent some time going against some other teams, kind of gauge where we're at as far as uh, offense and defense. We're still learning new systems. So, but I've been very pleased with the attitude. The kids, uh, the kids are showing up. They're giving their best effort, and that's pretty much that's the expectation. I expect their best effort in everything we do. Well, you are one of the newer kids on the block, although you did come in some mm -hmm. last year. So. But this probably is the first time that you've had a, a chance for an extended period of time 
to work with them under football conditions. What have you seen, Coach? Uh, the willingness willingness to learn, and which is what I was hoping to find. Just that, that want to, kind of want to hear. I tell them, be a sponge, listen to what we ask you to do, and just do it to the best of your ability. That's, that's your job. Listen to what we're teaching you. Do it to the best of your ability. You know, when I got here in January, I spent the time in my hallways and, and talking to the kids. Uh, recruiting a little. Uh, recruiting in my own hallways. Want to be very specific about that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we had 20 kids as returners when I got here. And so I was trying to just let kids see what I was about, what the coaches did that's about what we're about at West Hall. So the numbers have been coming out. We had kids camp last week. Uh, it was great. I was able to get about 65, 70 kids in the kids camp first one. So uh, feeling good about things right now. We've got a long ways to go, but we're in the right direction. I realize it is very early, and you haven't really seen them under real football conditions. But based on what you've seen so far, where do you figure you're going to be strong, and then where do you figure you're going to have to shore things up? Well, obviously our depth is going to be a problem. We're inexperienced. Um, so we're, you know, I think we've got six seniors. So the big thing is learning the systems um, and understanding responsibilities. And the other thing too is understanding, you know, to do your job, you don't have to do two, you know, more as far as um, try to win a game for us. We just want you to do your job and, and let things take care of itself. So I think the biggest thing has just been what we thought would be the learning curve. And, you know, it's going to take some time, kids understanding what the expectations are and then working towards living up to those expectations. Well, what have you seen so far that you say, well, this is pretty good? Well, the attitude, which is what my focus was, is we're going to control our attitude and we're going to play for 48 minutes. Uh, I think it's uh, something I believe in and we'll let the chips fall where they're at, but we can control our attitude. And that's been the biggest thing is changing the mindset as to what it is to be a Spartan. You know, that was the first thing to do when I got here, met with the seniors and some of the kids who were returning. And uh, what do we want to be known for as a Spartan? And I told them one of the conditions are you can't say to be the best team ever. You know, there's always going to be a better team. I want to know what is it that we're made of as a Spartan player? What's the expectations that, that we'll live on? We're more about leaving a legacy. Things like this are pretty good for this. Not only the passing camp, but you get the linemen involved. And, of course, the FCA is involved. Well, of course, anytime FCA, then um, I'm all about supporting that. And I'm glad that the linemen are involved. Usually the linemen get left out. We went down to East Hall, I guess it was last month, and our linemen competed. And I was, I was very, very pleased with how they did there. Um, we're pretty big up front. So, and I've told them, made no bones about it. They plan on riding their back. So, <laughs> they, they know what the expectation is. So, we'll see if we can't live up to that expectation. Good luck to the Spartans in 2012. Thank you. I'm excited. Now, last week, the East Hall Viking head coach, Brian Gray was on a family trip to the West Coast. So offensive coordinator Ken Stoudemire took the Vikings to this one. Well, summer's been pretty good for us. We've had real good uh, participation by the kids. Been coming in every morning, uh, getting a little bit stronger and getting a lot of work done both sides of the football. Uh, we've been doing a lot of passing league stuff on Tuesdays. Uh, and we're here today at Johnson High School for another passing league before the break. Yeah, I guess it does the break come at a pretty good time? Everybody a little dead-legged now? Yeah, you know, we've been pushing the kids real hard, both in the weight room and in the conditioning. And uh, a week off is uh, is going to be a good thing, both for the kids and the coaches. Kind of clear the clear the minds as well as the rest of the body. Where are you going to be strong, and where are you going to have to pick it up a little bit, Ken, this, week, uh, this year for well, this season? Hopefully we're going to be a little bit stronger on offensive line. Uh, we've got most of our kids coming back. Uh, we're going to be a little bit bigger and stronger. Um, we're going to be uh, a little young in, in some positions offensively. A couple of our running backs are going to be returners. But we're going to ask some younger kids to step up in those positions as well and kind of fill some shoes. Uh, with Jamon Witt graduating last year, we've got to find a couple of running backs to replace a lot of yardage. Uh, and so, you know, that's one of our challenges right now. Kind of a different makeup to Hall County and the leagues around this year, right? Yeah, it is. You know, Hall County is uh, it's a great place to live and work. Uh, I, I feel like our kids are as good as, as the kids anywhere, regardless of, of uh, whatever type of makeup you're talking about, either racially or socioeconomically. It is a little different here, but uh, we've got great kids who really enjoy playing the game, and we expect a lot out of them. Now, East Hall will have a scrimmage with Chester T on August the 16th. Oh, it's going to be hot. They'll open the season for real at Dawson County on the 24th. I suspect it'll still be quite warm. Now, the Lakeview coach, Matthew Gruen, was on hand with his lines, and he's got some size this year, both on the field and in the number of boys he has out for the team. Well, I tell you, we, we're probably looking at the biggest team we've ever had. Um, I think we're going to have over 30, which is, I think, the most we've ever had is probably 24, 25, and we're looking at having maybe 34, 35 kids, and, you know, we don't know what to do with ourselves with that many kids. Mm -hmm. Where's your strengths? Well, we got a great senior class. We've we've got 
probably 15 or 16 seniors. And um, for a small single-A school, that's pretty good. I mean, that's probably pretty good for a lot of places. And so their, their leadership, and then we've got some experience there, and it's um, – that's, I think that's going to be our biggest strength. As you go along through the season, where do you say, well, in order for us to have a, another successful season, you've had a couple of pretty good seasons here lately. What's it going to take? I mean, where have you got to pick it up? Well, we've, um, you know, I think everything's line of scrimmage, so if we can uh, continue to develop there, we feel like we got some pretty good skill guys. And if our line of scrimmage, which we think is going to be pretty good, uh, if they can continue to develop and, and, and get better, um, you know, I think we'll be okay. Looking forward to the year? Sound like you're optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, the numbers really is, you know, usually this time of year we're sitting about 18, 19 kids and we're begging for more, but it's, it's kind of neat to go knowing you're going to have possibly 30 or plus. Now the Lions of Lakeview will open the season for real on August the 31st. They'll be hosting Fellowship Christian. we got more coaches coming up for you on next week's show. We're back to wrap up this week's show when Hall County Sports concludes. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true treasures worth protecting, and a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905, Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. Gary Glenn back here in the studio with Rob Bruce, pastor of McEver Road United Methodist Church. And Rob, even though it's summertime, still a lot of activity here at the church. Yes, there is. You know, we've got a mission trip coming up the 1st of July where we'll be going to the Gulf Coast of Mississippi to help Katrina victims. Uh, a lot of people don't realize there's still a lot of people living in trailers and not in homes. So we're going to be uh, down there in July building a home for a family. All right, and uh, a series coming up on the book of James. That's right. We have a series that's uh, been requested from the congregation on the book of James. It'll begin the end of June and run through July. And one more thing I want you to talk mm -hmm. about is the vision statement that mm -hmm. came out of a recent planning retreat. Right. Yeah, our vision statement is loving Christ, loving people, and help people to love Christ. And that vision is our roadmap, if you will, to be able to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Rob Bruce, we'll see you in church on Sunday. And Gary, we'll see you then. If you've suffered storm damage or just want to upgrade your home, then turn to Rock Solid Construction. Rock Solid specializes in new roofs, room additions, porches, decks, custom interior trim, and even finished basements. Let the experts at Rock Solid Construction improve your home with new trim, new posts for the porch, or maybe even upgrade your deck with synthetic boards. No more rotting or warping. Call 678-300-0702 for your free estimate. That's 678-300-0702. Rock Solid, done right the first time. Hall County Sports is brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals and remember when you go green, go Green Ford. By Mountain View Auto Repair, a full service shop for all of your automotive needs. Call Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair at 770-535-7278. And by McEver Road United Methodist Church. Visit us on McEver Road in Oakwood with three worship services every Sunday morning, Kidstown and adult small groups. McEver Road United Methodist Church is dedicated to transforming the world through the good news of Jesus. Jesus Christ. We're back. I'm Gary Glenn. This is Hall County Sports. West Hall High School last week named Dustin Rinspies as its new head baseball coach. Rinspies comes to the Spartans from Mosley High School in Panama City Beach, Florida, where he's been an assistant coach and from where he graduated in 1991. He had a four-year minor league career, which included some time with the Dodgers and the Braves organizations. Rinspies also was an assistant coach at Jefferson Davis Junior College in Alabama and at Chipola College in Florida before returning to his alma mater. He replaces Pete Allen. This last season, the Spartans team finished at 7-16. and 16. Now, the Lanier Running Club had a number of athletes at the recent USA Track and Field State Championships in Fayetteville that qualified for the next round, the regionals coming up. Flowery Branch alumnus headed for South Carolina, Austin Eckenroth, second in the pole vault at 15-6, while Savannah Carnahan, who's headed for South Forsyth High in the fall, was first in the 3,000 meters in 11:08. She was second in the steeplechase and fifth in the 1,500 meters, and they are HCS TV Athletes of the Week, boy and girl. Others at that meet, Gabby Hoffman out of North Hall on the girls' side, third in the pole vault at 10 feet even, Whitley Swinton out of Stevens County, third in the long jump at 17-1, and first in the high jump at 5-2. West Hall's Ryan Sherry was third in the steeplechase. Chester Teach's Tori Mullinax was fifth in the 3,000 meters. Local youngsters competing out of the major impact sport group included Sarah Hayes and Markel Woodard from Gainesville and Brandon Thompson from Chester Teach. 
at that Fayetteville meet. Sarah took third place in the heptathlon and finished in sixth place in the open 800 meters, time of 226 there. She had to finish out the entire competition after falling over the hurdles in the first round of competition and was able to rebound very well, we hear, to finish the competition and qualify for the regionals. Markel Woodard, he was second in the 800 meters in 202 and eighth in the 400 at 53.27. Brandon Thompson in the 100 meters, he was fourth in the 111 flat and in the 200 third in 22.17. He's also part of the 4x1 relay team that took second place and is ranked in the top 10 of the country, a time of 41.64. Now, all of these athletes have qualified to compete at these regional championships in Newport News, Virginia, July 5th through the 8th. And that's the qualifying meet for the USATF Nationals, and that will be held in Baltimore, Maryland. Gainesville's Spencer Ralston shot a 76 in his final round and finished in a tie for seventh place out of 114 golfers in the 13-14 year old age group in the Future Masters Junior Golf Tournament held at the Dothan Country Club in Dothan, Alabama. He shot a 70 and 73 the first two days for a total of 219. The tournament champion was Hunter Dunnigan of Martinez, who won with rounds of 69, 71, and 72 for a 212 total. And finally, congratulations to local cyclist Davis Branion, who recently won a national championship in the juniors men's 10 to 12 year old division. He won the USA National Championship Criterium over riders from almost all 50 states. Davis edged out Ben Clark of Portland, Oregon at the line to take the gold medal. Now he rides for Frazier Cycling out of Swanee. Their founder and coach, Ralph Frazier, says Davis crashed in the road race on the first day and finished 15th, but came back in the time trials the next day, finishing a surprising second. Now, he's also a football player at Chester State Academy, and, and Davis plans to play football again, but says he's going to focus on cycling until their season ender in September in Dahlonega at the Six Gap Criterium. Now, in addition to this national championship, he has already won events in Atlanta, Macon, Athens, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Greenville, South Carolina, and Anniston, Alabama this year. That's our show for this week. I'm Gary Glenn. Join us next week right here for more Hall County Sports. <laughs> If you've suffered storm damage or just want to upgrade your home, then turn to Rock Solid Construction. Rock Solid specializes in new roofs, room additions, porches, decks, custom interior trim, and even finished basements. Let the experts at Rock Solid Construction improve your home with new trim, new posts for the porch, or maybe even upgrade your deck with synthetic boards. No more rotting or warping. Call 678-300-0702 for your free estimate. That's 678-300-0702. Rock Solid. Done right the first time. Your one-stop spot for complete auto repair is the Auto Works shop on Sprout Springs Road. On everything from oil changes to brakes, new and used tires and tune-ups, even the big jobs like transmissions, the specialists at the Auto Works can have you up and running just like that. We talk about value, the Auto Works will not be undersold on used tires or any locally priced repair job. Ask about special discounts for students and teachers with your ID. That's the Auto Works at 6671 Spout Springs Road, just past Flowery Branch High and Spout Springs Elementary Schools. Phone 770-967-1732.